What is going on guys? This is Trinkill and welcome back to my Smite Beginner Guides. Now if this is the first beginner guide you are watching, this is the second in the series. Make sure you go back and watch the first one, otherwise some things I say in this one might not make sense because I may be referring to something from the first video. So for those of you who have watched the first video, you'll remember we talked about extreme basics and we also talked about the three most common beginner mistakes. In episode two, we're going to help you polish your game a little bit by talking about communication and the minimap. So let's jump right into it. Let's talk about communication. Now communication starts from the very beginning, as soon as you enter into a lobby with four other people. This is one of the most important phases of the game, even though the game hasn't actually started yet. This part is all about building a good team comp, and good team composition is absolutely crucial if you're planning on winning. Now what I mean by that is that your team is not likely to win if you have too many of one thing, meaning you have too many physical gods, too many magical gods, too many ranged or melee gods, too many tanks or DPS. You have to have a good mix of all the different types of gods to be successful. Now the reason that's important is that if you have too many physical gods, the other team can just build physical defense items and your entire team's going to be screwed. If you have too many melee gods, the enemy's ranged gods are going to be able to keep you at bay for the most part. If you have too many carries or assassins, you're not not likely to fare well in team fights, one, because you don't have anybody who can absorb a lot of the other team's damage, and two, most of their toolkits are not very effective in group scenarios. Now this is where communication comes into play. In this lobby, before anybody auto locks, you want to make sure that you have all of your lanes decided. Who's going to mid, who's going to tank, who's going to be the assassin, who's going to DPS. You want to make sure you have that all worked out. Now there won't always be an official conversation that breaks down. If you can look at the team comp and say, okay, we've got two physical we've got two magical, we've got a tank, and we've got two ranged. You're probably safe. But if you do look at your team and you notice that you have four physical melee assassin type gods, then you probably want to make a comment in the lobby so that your team can kind of switch things around. Now obviously it won't always work out that way. There are going to be times where somebody grabs a god and automatically locks them in. That's called auto locking. And if you want an efficient way to really frustrate a veteran player, go ahead and pick some random god and auto lock them without saying anything. The problem with auto locking and why it's found to be particularly rude is because now the four other players on your team are forced to build around the selection that you made. Instead of picking a god and locking them in right away, just pick them. That way your team knows that that's who you'd prefer to be, but it's not who you're going to force them into building around. Now even further on that topic, if you decide to queue by yourself, meaning that if you join a conquest match alone with nobody else in your party, there's a good chance that you're going to be coupled with other people who may be playing together. You may have four people, two of which are playing in the left lane together, two of which are playing in the right lane together. So if you were to auto-lock an assassin, what that's going to do is break one of those couples apart and make one of them mid. Now obviously that's just a crappy thing to do because they queued together and they probably wanted to play in a lane together, but another problem that creates is that they're more than likely in a Skype call or mumble or team speak, something like that together, and what you're doing is you're breaking down their lines of verbal communication and forcing them to lane with somebody random that they've never Never played with before and they probably won't have near the amount of synergy that they would have had with their original laning partner. I know when I queue with SNK, more times than not, I know what he's going to do and he knows what I'm going to do at all times. And that's just because we've laned together a ton. If somebody were to auto lock and randomly break that apart, it would greatly affect our chances of winning the game. Alright, so now that we got our team comp out of the way and we've got a decent team, let's go ahead and assume we jumped into a match. For the rest of this episode, we are going to assume that you are with a laning partner in the left lane. Now, like I said in the beginning, communication starts in the very beginning as soon as you enter into the lobby with four other players. That lasts all the way through into the post-game lobby until you leave. Now, in-game, again, assuming we're in the left lane, it is your responsibility to let your middle and right lanes know exactly what's going on in your lane at all times. Now, the problem with that is that you don't always have time to type out a message and let everybody know what's happening. That's where VGS comes into play. Now VGS stands for Voice Game System and is a series of key combinations that you can hit to send an in-game verbal message to your team. For instance, VF1 will say to your team, enemy missing left. Enemy missing left. VT1 will say enemies have returned left. Enemies have returned left. If you see one of the enemy gods leave your lane, you might want to say VF1, enemy missing left, and then VC2, be careful middle. Be careful middle. And there's a ton of different other things that you can say, including some funny ones. Awesome. You rock. I'm the crew. 
greatest. So just as important as it is for you to get to know all of the gods, it's also equally as important for you to get to understand how to use VGS. Now on the flip side of that, and this is where we're going to start talking about the minimap, you cannot expect or rely on your other teammates to call their missings because they may have made a mistake or they may just not see that the person in their lane is missing. So watching the minimap is imperative to your lane safety. If you can look at the minimap and see the enemy mids icon and both the enemy gods in the right lane's icons, then you know that you're safe from being ganked by one of the other lanes. However, if you are pushed up doing damage to the enemy's left tower and you do not see the enemy mid's icon, then it's a very, very good chance that that god is on his way over to the left lane to help defend the tower and you may be setting yourself up for a gank. This is called overextending, and almost every single new player will do this before they master the minimap. Eventually, you'll learn your lesson, and you'll learn to check the minimap before you push up into a lane so that it doesn't happen again. So always be watching the minimap for enemy god icons. Those icons will always be on the map if the enemy gods are in range of one of your gods, your minions, or one of your towers. If you don't see them on the minimap, that means one of three things. They're either too far away from something that's on your team, they may have recalled back to their base, or they're in the jungle somewhere. Now, enemy gods in the jungle will never be seen on the map unless one of your gods is right beside them. But there is a consumable in the game that will fix that, and these are extremely important. They're called wards, and they can be strategically placed in the jungle to help prevent ganks. Now, when you place a ward in the jungle, it works just as if there was a god standing there, or a minion, or a tower. It works exactly like something from your team is in that location. So when an enemy god gets within an eyesight radius of that ward, they will pop up on the map. Wards are imperative for your team survival. So many times I've gone for ganks, and as soon as I step within eye shot of that ward, the enemy team starts to retreat. That's because they've placed a ward in that spot, they're watching the minimap, and they see me coming. There's no way I can get behind them now because they know I'm there. So it takes the element of surprise out of those ganks. Now, wards aren't super important through the early parts of the laning phase, so you don't necessarily need to buy them in your initial 1500 gold build out. However, once everybody starts getting their ultimates, you'll notice that people will start roaming a little bit more, and they start to become important. So at that point, you have to decide which you need more, health potions or mana potions, because like I said, wards are a consumable, and they take up one of your consumable slots. When you do end up buying wards and placing them in the jungles, I would recommend that you place them strategically, not just anywhere. Remember, wards work on line of sight, so if you place it in one of the jungle camps, it's only going to see inside that jungle camp and right outside the entrance. The best places to put them are in intersections. You might try putting them on the bottom and top entrances of your jungle. When you get mid to late game, you're definitely going to want wards in front of Fire Giant and Gold Fury. It's also important to ward right outside of the red buff camp, since 9 times out of 10, when a mid comes to gank, they're going to take that path past their red buff and get red buff on the way. Now, if the game goes to where everybody hits level 20 and your entire team is buying wards, you're going to run out of spots to place them. In that case, it might be smart to start illuminating the entire entire jungle so that you don't miss anything. Now for one final level of communication, you can always hold your spacebar and click anywhere on the minimap and it will ping the map. You'll hear a sound, a dot will start flashing on the minimap where the ping happened, and the person who pinged the map will be highlighted over on the list of players. Now there's several reasons that you may want to ping the map. If you've got wards set up in the jungle and one of your people is missing in your lane, you call out enemy missing left. Well, when they pop up on one of the wards in the jungle, you can say be careful middle and ping the map where you see that enemy god's icon pop up. That way not only did you let everybody know that you've got an enemy missing, you've also said hey be careful middle because I see him right there and then you've pinged the map just in case your mid was not paying attention and showed them exactly where that god was coming from. So you've done your due diligence and you've done every single thing that you could possibly do to prevent that player from being killed. And you're not only doing that because you don't want your players to die, you're also doing that so that they can in no way blame anyone else for their death. 
not only is that going to save you from being yelled at, but it's also going to teach that player to not overextend. So that about wraps up my tips on communication and the minimap, but there's one other thing that I want to mention on the topic of communication, and that is bad manners. Now there are so many bad manners going around in the MOBA community that they've actually created a shorthand for it called BMing. Now BMing could be anything from somebody yelling at someone else for not calling out an enemy missing, or while dead and you're spectating somebody else, if you see them do something that you wouldn't have necessarily done or that might show that they're a new player, and you saying something like, oh dude, you suck. That is in no way constructive criticism. It's not helping in any way. You're just being an asshole. So take all of that energy that you spent being an ass and typing out a sentence to tell somebody how bad they are and flip that around and instead try to help that person. Remember, they're probably already upset with themselves for dying so much anyway, and you yelling at them is only going to put them in a worse mood and probably make them play worse altogether. Whereas if you were to help them in some way, you might give them a tip that may change the way that they play that character, that god, and it may make them just good enough to where you can get through the game with a win. The problem is that it's so much easier to just berate them all game, take the loss, and then get into the post-game lobby and say, oh, we only lost because blah 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 sucked. Don't be that guy. It makes the game no fun for anybody on your team and makes the enemy team think that you're just a really, really poor loser. So that's going to wrap it up, guys. Hopefully this series has helped you out so far, and I'm hoping that you're looking forward to future episodes. If you guys have any questions or comments, anything like that, make sure you leave that stuff in the comment section below. I will do my best to take a look and answer those questions. And until next time, guys, thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me, and we'll see you later. Thanks, guys. Bye.